In a very peaceful area in the Danvers region in Ukraine, Mykola lives with his pregnant wife Nastia. Both of them are known as the first eco-settlers in the area. Nastia is an artist who likes drawing and wood carving. She even makes a wood angel for Mykola so he can have a protection amulet. Mykola is a mathematician, physicist, and ecologist that teaches at the local school, which he travels to on his bicycle. The peace sign outside their home is the paw of the white raven, representing an ancient legend of a raven that felt pity for people and brought them fresh water and food, losing its feathers in the process. Because of the lack of electronics at home, the couple does not get any news until Mikola goes to work and gets a few minutes of TV during his break. That is how he learns about the protesters that were killed in Ukraine's capital city and Russia possibly invading the country. During class, Mikola is harassed by student Ivan, who thinks his teacher is a stranger and a weirdo, so he wants him gone. But Mikola never lets him anger him because he believes in pacifism and working on guiding the youth's mind. One morning on his way to work, Mikola notices some soldiers standing by the road but pays them no mind. When he finally arrives at school, he is shocked to find it empty, and the TV quickly tells him why. Russia has invaded Ukraine, remembering the soldiers he saw earlier. Mikola worries about his wife and rushes back to his house, but it is already too late. The Russians are there beating Nastya up, and they catch Mikola too when he tries to defend her. After the soldiers make sure they are not spies, they start a fire inside the house and leave. But when Nastya tries to retaliate by throwing a stone at them, the soldiers do not hesitate to shoot her before finally going away. Devastated, Mikola clings to his wife's body while watching his house burn down. Hours later, two members of the Ukrainian militia find Mikola, and after checking his identity to make sure he is an innocent civilian, they help him dig a grave for Nastya. Then they take him away with them to their base, although before leaving, Mikola makes sure to take the wood angel with him as the last memory of his wife. The higher-ups at the base are not happy about the sudden arrival of a stranger because he could be a spy. But Mikola quickly proves himself by saying he wants to join the army and drive the Russians out of their country. From then on, Mikola is sent to a heavy training course where he must learn to exhaust his body and use firearms, two things that as a pacifist he has never done before. Disassembling and assembling weapons is particularly hard for him and it earns him the mockery of his superiors, especially when he announces he has chosen Raven as a code name. Mikola does not let them put him down and trains extra hard, staying up late with weapon practice and keeping the wood angel close so he never forgets his objective, getting revenge for his wife. A few weeks later, the trainees learn there are not enough snipers at the front and the army is looking for volunteers for the job. Not many people are interested, but Mikola immediately volunteers, only to be met with more mockery. Still not willing to give up, Mikola takes a challenge to prove himself. He disassembles and reassembles an AK-47 while blindfolded in under 20 seconds, finally earning everyone's respect. They also start calling him Raven, as he wanted. The theoretical part of sniper training comes easily to Mikola, thanks to his knowledge of mathematics and physics, being able to do calculations faster than the teachers themselves. He is also excellent at following the number one rule, which is keeping absolutely still and quiet, even when an instructor shoots at the ground near him. Unfortunately, he does not do well when it comes to the actual shooting, because for some reason, they have given him a different weapon from everybody else, the kind of firearm that is not apt for war sniping. Whenever Mikola points this out, he is told to deal with it. Once again, Mikola refuses to give up and makes a plan to prove what he can do. The last sniper test is during the night, and the trainees must shoot as soon as a flare shot by the instructor gives them enough light around their subjects. However, Mikola does not shoot yet. He uses the light to calculate the distance, and once the exam is over, then he shoots under complete darkness and hits the target exactly in the center, something nobody else managed. This allows Mikola to graduate with the highest score and ends up being assigned to a first-class unit. For his first mission, Mikola and his fellow snipers must free an important checkpoint that has been captured by the Russians. The team successfully sneaks into the area without being detected, and each sniper gets assigned a target. But when they are about to shoot, they must pause the plan because a civilian car approaches the checkpoint. The Russian soldiers make the two civilians come out and hand in their passports, refusing to give them back when they ask the couple to leave. The man makes a scene as he demands to be given his things back, causing the Russian soldiers to respond with violence. Mikola's team notices this and immediately attacks, killing every soldier with quick, efficient shots, including the guy that tries to hold the civilian woman hostage. Once the mission is over, the team hangs the Ukrainian flag to retake control of the checkpoint. 
When they return to base, Mikola hears his fellow newbies have left on a different mission, so he uses this moment of downtime to visit the school he used to work at, finding himself deeply moved by the desolate sight of the dusty classrooms. The next day, when the other team comes back, Mikola is hit by the hardest of news. One of his friends has died at the hands of an enemy sniper. This adds to the list of reasons why Mikola wants to get revenge. For the next mission, Mikola's team hides a bunch of explosives on trees behind leaves before they hide in the grass while waiting for their enemy to show up. When the Russian soldiers appear in the forest as reports had anticipated, Mikola hesitates to shoot because he sees something he cannot believe. Ivan has joined the Russian army and is coming this way with the rest of their enemies. He snaps out of it when the captain orders him to shoot, and Mikola hits the detonator, killing every Russian soldier, including Ivan. When the captain asks him what was all about and hears Mikola's explanation, he responds, Ivan had made his choice. Later, during a break, Mikola and the captain bond over their memories of home. The captain carries with him a picture of his family and explains he has an agreement with his wife not to tell his daughters the nature of his job, so they think he is away on a business trip. In return, Mikola shows him the wood angel, explaining it symbolizes his own family. A few days later, the Ukrainian forces manage to secure the trenches by the border, so the sniper team gets in position to wait for the Russian forces that are getting ready to invade this region. Keeping the angel with him at all times, Mikola gets ready to do his job, but he loses his usual calmness when he notices that among the arriving Russian soldiers, he can see the man that killed his wife. Desperate for revenge, Mikola keeps asking for permission to shoot, and the captain turns him down every time because the enemy is not in the right position yet. Eventually, Mikola gets tired of waiting and shoots anyway, hitting the soldier, but also giving away their location to a hidden enemy sniper that immediately retaliates and kills the captain. As the Russians open fire on them, Mikola has to drag the captain's body through the field while dodging every bullet and every bomb. Hours later, when Mikola finally makes it back to the base, his superior promises there will be an investigation to find out the sniper that killed the captain, and when they finally find him, they will call Mikola to take care of him. Meanwhile, Mikola is overwhelmed with guilt and decides to throw himself into solo missions to make up for his mistake. His sniper skills are still on point, and he manages to take down many Russian soldiers, but without anyone keeping him on his toes, he also gets too risky and ends up with a wounded arm caused by an enemy bullet. Mikola goes to a secret hideout to take time to recover and watch the news to get an update on the political status of the negotiations with Russia, but his break is interrupted by an important call. It turns out the army has found the location of the sniper that killed the captain, so Mikola needs to come back. Before the mission begins, the soldiers are told all the information that has been gathered so far. The sniper's bullets are wide-ranging, he has already killed five Ukrainian snipers and three machine gunners, and his name is Sari. To make matters worse, he records all his kills and posts the videos to demoralize them. He even had the nerve to post the recording of their captain's death. At least all these casualties have allowed them to pinpoint Sari's location, and since they cannot fill the place with mines because of a chlorine storage in the chemical plant where the enemy is hiding, they have come up with an alternate plan. Their snipers will take out the lower soldiers to clear the way in order for Mikola to sneak inside and get Sari face to face. When the mission begins, all the Ukrainian snipers get in position and wait for Mikola to get inside the building by crawling through the field. The first soldier he finds is the other man that had attacked his home and still remembers Mikola, saying he should have killed him the first time. After killing him with one quick and satisfying shot, Mikola gives his teammates the okay to attack, prompting all the Ukrainian snipers to fire at the same time and managing a sweep of the area without raising any alerts. There are only two Russian snipers left, including Sari. They do not notice there is something wrong until they stop receiving messages over the comms and go to check on their fellow soldiers, finding them all dead. While Mikola uses the chance to get deeper into the building unnoticed, Sari calls for backup and sends the other soldier to keep watch before he returns to his spot, where he is surprised to see a little wood angel. At that moment, Mikola comes out, jumping on Sari to kill him with a knife, while the other Russian soldier falls victim to a grenade that is waiting for him. Then the backup that Sari called for arrives at the area, so Mikola uses Sari's radio to tell the new soldiers that they will pay for what they did. As soon as the Russian truck parks, the Ukrainian soldiers open fire on it, eliminating all the targets in seconds. Now that Mikola has avenged his wife, his friend, and his captain, he decides to take a break and go back home to visit Nastya's grave, making sure to fix the cross that had fallen. Sadly, as much as he misses his home, 
He cannot stay because there is much more work to do for his country. Soon he is on another solo mission, ready to bring down as many Russian soldiers as necessary. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.